inside of Hard Rock Stadium. It seems like it's been years since we've seen a game. <laughs> it's only been a few weeks, but still today it is a showdown and what turns out to be the regular season finale, Senior Day for number 10 Miami, hosting number 17 UNC in what is also a revenge game. And we are getting you ready here at Hurricanes game day. What a big day ahead. Will Manso, wait, who are, who are these guys? That's, is that Michael Barrow and Josh Darrow that I see? What's up, Will? How you doing? What's Michael. Up? Guys, I missed you guys. What's up, fellas? Man, I miss talking Canes doing? football. And I know we've had some games, but man, uh, as far as a home game, it's been a while. Uh, been fun to watch the wins, not so fun to watch all the madness. But Michael, as, as we begin the day, it's good to be back because it, it's hard to get a bigger game for Miami at home to end the regular season than the one they've got today against UNC. Yeah, no, no doubt about it, man. If Clemson was the uh, midterm exam, uh, <laughs> North Carolina is the final exam, right? Yeah. And I, I, lo I love his quote. It said, experience is a hard teacher because it gives you the test first and then a the lesson afterwards. So I'm curious to see what lesson that we learned after that embarrassing loss against Clemson. You get North Carolina coming in here that arguably – I think, man, they got the most talented skill positions in the ACC and possibly in the country. Yeah. I mean, their their offense, their skill position remind me when I played against the greatest uh, show on turf, you know, with uh, Terry Holt and Marshall Falk and those guys with the speed that they have on the field. Man, they, they're a, a great threat. I mean, they average uh, over 500 uh, yards per game. They score over 401 41 points per game. Mm -hmm. And so I'm ready to see this matchup because, you know, in the preseason, right, they were favored to win the Coastal. Obviously, the season didn't go as planned, but you can't sleep on them. This is a great matchup with Sam Howell at quarterback and then the tell of our take with our offense or with our team and the momentum we've been having doing, like you say, during this uh, tough time. Man, our guys been responding. So I want to see how they respond to this challenge again because, you know, last year, uh, North Carolina, that was a tough loss. But, hey, we can redeem ourselves like you talked about early in the show. And, Josh, to Michael's point, look, there's the football side of things. And, obviously, we're going to spend a lot of time here at Hurricanes game. They talk about the X's and O's. There's also the, the storyline of things. It's been a brutal season uh, due to COVID-19 and all the adjustments that Manny Diaz and this program have had to make. You've got this being senior day. You've got next week's game, as we know, now officially canceled against Georgia Tech. So this is the regular season finale. And, oh, by the way, if the Canes win this game today, they could be playing at home for the Orange Bowl. So it, you add it all up, and the storylines of this game are significant. Yeah, there's a lot at stake. You know, there's, like Mike said, you know, uh, we all talked and, and watched and previewed and, and did all the aftermath on Clemson. And, and this is the next big game on the schedule for the University of Miami. It's also the last game on the schedule, as you mentioned, Will, with the news about Georgia Tech. Of course, there's a bowl game to be played as well, but Miami's setting itself up to have a really special season, right? A, mm -hmm. a one-loss season. Uh, we were hoping for a 10-win season, but now that Georgia Tech game is gone to a nine-win season, going to a New Year's Six bowl game, uh, coming off really a year ago w with a six and seven lopsided season, mm -hmm. you know, a huge turnaround, but you, you have to finish. You have to finish it off, and that's what's at, at stake today for the University of Miami. I think the other thing that's at stake We've talked a few times this year, right, about either handling failure or handling success. Miami's coming off a huge win a week ago against Duke. Now you got to finish that off. you got to have the right mindset to not be satisfied, to see it through to the finish line, mm -hmm. to still reinforce the culture that, that Coach Diaz is trying to create, and then really tie that bow around a really special season that the University of Miami can have. And we've talked about, you know, we always go back to Clemson because they're really, you know, they're the they're the program that you gauge yourself against. Yeah. And if you finish the season the way you want, which you're not, you're not only setting yourself up for this year, but then you're setting yourself up to, 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 to really carry it into the offseason, finish off the 21 class in recruiting, but then carry it into next year and keep building and developing your program so it grows back to being the elite program you want it to be. So there's a lot here. Yeah. It's also a home game. Right, it's a home game. We have when was the last? Forget doing this show. When's the last time Miami's played at Hard Rock Stadium? It's been a while. And, and playing at home and winning at home is very important to Manny Diaz as well. Yeah, Michael. You know, to Josh's point too, and I know you touched on it. Look, there are a lot of storylines, but the revenge game is certainly a factor. And when you are trying to take that next step as a program, Josh alluded to last year. It was a disappointing season, and one of the disappointments was that you lose to UNC the way they did, and UNC charges back, and Sam Howell makes those big plays, and you lose that kind of game. In the big picture, it's almost like you take a step back in the ACC. Well, this year, Miami has taken that step forward to be up there just below Clemson. And, and, and as far as when you're looking at the bigger teams in the ACC, 
beating a team like this today and getting that revenge is significant, isn't it? And trying to say, hey, we're, we, are, we are at that level where we have improved from last year, and now we're the team to be reckoned with, not UNC. Yeah, and I, and I love what Josh said earlier about, you know, dealing with success. You know, coach used to say all the time, one of my coaches, nine out of ten people can deal with failure, but only one out of ten can handle success. And normally I would be a little cautious, you know, because they might have been having some great wins. Mm -hmm. But I'm not worried about that this game because this is personal, you know. Yep. I mean, I was at that North Carolina game uh, last year. And just to see, I mean, North Carolina jumped out early on us. We came back, took the lead, Will Mallory touchdown. And then, man, for North Carolina to drive down the field and 4 for 17 no, convert that don't bring it up, Michael. Don't touchdown. bring it up, Michael. I know it hurts. Oh. No, hey, I feel like Waukee, like, like every day. That's my feeling. It hurts. And that pain, man, is, is hurting because then also you factor in because they love their coach, right? Mm -hmm. And don't get it twisted. They know what happened to their coach when their coach worked with Matt Brown. So they want to oh, yeah. get that W for him, you know, and leaving that. Un so really, to me, it's unfinished business. And this year, we got to take care of business. As alumni, they sent out the like flyers for the game, and the, and they had and they had Nestor on there talking about stump the heels. That was the slogan, yeah. and that's what we need to do. We need to stump the heels today, man, and get that W because, like you said earlier, it's a lot at stake today. Yeah, and too, Michael, you know, the one thing I think the final storyline to touch on here in this first segment is something that you obviously have lived through. You understand the significance of. And Josh, you've covered for many years the players, what a senior day means. And I'm not sure there's a more significant senior day for seniors than what they've had to deal with this year, you know, to not be able to be there with their families and all the moving of games. And, and if you haven't seen it yet, for those watching on at Canes Football on their Twitter account, on their uh, YouTube Canes All Access, there's a great video of the surprise that the seniors got from family members virtually. But Josh, the bottom line is this, these guys... You, you go through those stages in covering recruiting, and these guys put their heart and soul into the dream of, of repping the University of Miami and wearing that U on their helmet, and today's the final time they'll get to do that at Hard Rock Stadium, these seniors. Yeah, and, and, and Michael could speak to this, obviously, probably a little bit better than me, but they put so much into this. I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure people really understand what players and coaches, the sacrifices they really make you know, each and every week. When you're a student athlete, you might even be an athlete student because it's like full-time work. It's It's training room before practice, it's practice, it's coming back for meetings, it's studying on your iPads, yeah. uh, it's being away from, from the student body when you're on the road. And then this year, you think about sort of the pressure that was on the, the, the athletes to stay healthy and, and, and all the rules and protocols and, and, and the risks they took uh, to just play football. And, and I think we've all seen how meaningful football is to everybody, right, with the pandemic. I, I can speak to it personally. I missed this. I missed the games. I missed you legitimately. Absolutely. Like the last few weeks, I missed getting ready for games. I miss watching film. I miss talking to oh, Michael on the phone. Man, group hug. No, I'm group serious. Hug, man. Group hug. I'm serious. Yeah. And I Mike, you've coached. Hug, All right, let's go. Come on. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, it hug, means. Man. So if that's how it meant to me, you imagine the players. If that's how it means to me, imagine what it means to the people that in, that invest really their lives into this because I, I you know the, yeah we know you hear stories about the coaches and the hours they put in but the student athletes themselves they put a lot of time in as well and and, and this is for, for most of them this is it you know only a handful get to the nfl this is the last time uh, and it means a lot and i think it just everything this year was heightened because this year there was such a strain you know there was such a strain this year mm -hmm. on everybody because of the pandemic and i think it made everything more meaningful yeah, it's significant. Michael, I want to get your take on it a little bit later in the show because I think it's, it's important for fans to hear your perspective as a player and what it means because, you know, it doesn't matter. As Josh just said, it might be the, the last time that they rep the U at home and all those things, but right. you're always part of the U family, and that never goes away. So we'll get Michael's take on that in just a little bit, but we're going to come back here on Hurricanes game. Then we're going to also get into the X's and O's. This is a very good football game regardless of all the storylines and big pictures. So we'll get into some of the – things to watch and what Miami has done since the last time we all talked and <laughs> luckily it's a lot of good stuff when Hurricanes game day rolls on but right now let's get to our UPS delivery of the game. Coach congratulations on that and we have plenty of time to talk about Miami and Virginia Tech but we have some other pressing matters to get to first. We're going to uh, have the program on pause for a little bit and the schedule is going to change a little bit here over the next couple of weeks. We'll be off the next couple of weeks, and and uh, and but that will give our our guys a chance to get healthy, 
to get well. We've got to continue to battle the, the, the virus. We've got to double down on our protections because it's obvious that it's spread in our community as at as high of a level as it's been at any point this year. But if we do that, uh, we got a, you know, we got a little uh, run in December and, uh, and all of our goals still to play for. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck broadcasting from home, Katie George in Durham. And tonight from fanless Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Well, it's 2020, so it's not hard to believe a top 10 team like Miami will play for the first time in three weeks. Ooh, ooh. Got seven on the phone. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's passion, yeah. Here we go, go to work, though, bro. Love you. All right, bro. I'll hit you out the game. Looks, here comes the pressure. Phillips is there, and he's hitting him down for a sack. They twist their defensive tackle and the defensive end. They all get the penetration. They swarm the quarterback. King takes the snap. Heddles back to throw. And yep. the middle caught for a touchdown. And Miami strikes first. Big hole up the left side. Here we go. Harris is long gone. Cameron Harris will take it all the way home. It's going to be a reverse to the right side. Big <laughs> hole. It's brought down back at the 45 by Jalen Phillips. Yeah. Keeping himself right side. King at the 4 3 2 1. Dives to the pylon. Touchdown, Miami. Looking hit by Roche and brought down. Let's see what happens. It's Miami's football. And it's going to be Corey Flagg who comes away with it. There's a toss out to Wiggins. 3 2 1. Wiggins into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. King back to throw. Fire down the middle. Caught by Harley. There he goes. He's long gone. Bora Gallus is solid from 52 yards away. First snap, he's going to run for his life. And he fumbles the football. A gun out for the University of Miami. The Hurricanes, again, playing outstanding defense tonight. They play great defense, wire to wire. Hurricanes. Have won five in a row and run their record to eight and one with two games remaining, both at Hard Rock Stadium. Dang, back to us looking deep, throwing it. It's going to be caught for a touchdown by Mike Corley. Two plays. And a touchdown for Miami. King with a heavenly pass to Mike Harley for a touchdown. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish. So you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team. I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep us safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are. We're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually.
Welcome back to Hurricanes game day, and it is game day, a unique one indeed inside Hard Rock Stadium for the Miami Hurricanes taking on UNC in a very significant game. Senior day, major bowl implications, and oh yeah, a little sweet revenge. That would be nice too against the Tar Heels for what happened last season, and that is coming your way at 3.30 there from inside Hard Rock Stadium. But until then, we continue to get you ready. Will Manso, Michael Barrow, and Josh Darrow here on Hurricanes game day, and guys, we reset what has been, it seemed like, forever since we, we last talked, and, and we joke, but uh, that's just the way this year has felt in slow motion at times. But what have we learned, I think, is, is a good thing to talk about now. Since the last time we saw the Miami Hurricanes play inside Hard Rock Stadium, we learned a lot of good. We saw a few wins. So, Josh, we begin with you, uh, a significant trend, and that's Miami closing games. To win games, you got to close games. To close games, you got to play well in the fourth quarter. What have you seen from Miami in fourth quarters? Well, I think the biggest thing, Will, that we've seen is, is the very fact, and, and, and I, like, I like doing this with you because you're an you're NBA guy, right? What do they talk about in the NBA? They don't remember how you finish. They don't remember how you start. They always talk about who, who's the those finisher. Those final two minutes, right? That's who, what they always talk about in the NBA, right? Right. Who finishes, the, who finishes, who are the playmakers, who makes the plays? And yeah. I think with the University of Miami, when you look at the NC State and, and the Virginia Tech game, and even going back to the Virginia game, right? The games weren't perfect for Miami, and, and certainly in two of those games they were behind but they finished the games when the games mattered most, right? They won in the fourth quarter. We've got money time, winning time, whatever you want to call it. When the game was on the line, Miami made the most plays. And I think, you know, you look at the defense in the fourth quarter, you know, they were the ones that were making plays, as you see here. We kind of saw the emergence of the Corey Couch going back, I think, to the NC State game. I think you also saw a team that, you know, always hear coaches talk about toughness, right? Mental toughness or, or not panicking. And I think you saw a team that, that persevered, right? They persevered, they got to the fourth quarter, uh, and then they made plays. Uh, and you see it right here, you know, Mike Harley making a play, De'Ara King making a play. And I also think the other thing, uh, the, the final thing I want to mention here in terms of what we learned, and I know we've talked about this before, Miami's not winning these games without special teams. You know, Jose, Jose Borregales has been huge. You go back to that NC State game, he makes two kicks in the fourth quarter. He, he misses any one of those. They don't even have a chance to win the ball game. So I think the biggest thing for Miami is when you have seasons like this, you're going to have close games. And the difference between special seasons and average seasons are making the plays to win the close games. And Miami has done that, and we've seen them do that here uh, really since the, since the last time we spoke. We had so much to talk about. Uh, they went on the road too, right? They went on the road and pulled those games out. And I think when you look at building a team and a program, mm -hmm. you know, winning in the fourth quarter and, and being tough and pulling out close games, those things are huge. And Michael, to his point, look, it's a mentality. It's, it's, it's ability to finish. And when you've watched them in these last few weeks doing that, how much has it been a mindset aside from the football stuff of just saying, hey, we got to find a way to close these games. It's the only way we're going to win and improve. Yeah, and when you talk about mindset, man, when we was at Miami, when we throw up that four, those four fingers, it, it ain't bro man or Martin talking about, hey, I live on the fifth floor. And it means like, man, it's our time to turn it up and get it done, right? And you see it, that's what's been happening. Offensively, man, we outscored opponents uh, in the fourth quarter, I believe 65 to 31. Defensively, man, in last, last seven games, we only gave up 17 points in the fourth quarter. And this season, fourth quarter, we got five shutouts, right? Yeah. So that's what he's talking about. To me, it's the green tree free, uh, tree, green tree effect. And what I mean for those guys on those green tree, it's our practice field. And when I was there and I talked to Manny Diaz, it's the same thing I'm talking to. I was like, this is what I'm talking about, where the practices are harder than the game, right? Where you talk about practice tempo. So now what's happening is that now guys are going to game confident because their condition, their practice is mm -hmm. so hard, right? That when they get in the game, it's easy. And then you look and you see, especially early in the season with the humidity and stuff, you, know, you see your opponent throwing up and all that stuff. It breeds confidence because coward, right? Uh, make uh, excuse me, fatigue makes cowards of them all. But conditioning, being in the base, best conditioning, brings that confidence. Mm -hmm. So then now, when you in those situations in the fourth quarter, you like, man, we're the hardest working team. We got this. I remember when we played Florida State. Uh, Kirk Carruthers, uh, one of their, their linebackers, say, hey. We thought we was going to win in the fourth quarter, but Miami knew they were going to win. And when you see the guys step on the field and you look at the leaders, right, that, oh, remember yeah. the Titans, like uh, a leadership reflect attitude? Yeah. Like you see Derrick King, ain't nothing, everything about him is we about to win. You see Bubba Bowden, nose bleeding, right? We about to get this right. You see Quincy Roche, Jelly Phillips, man, those guys turn it up to another notch. And that's the thing that I like, man, just the attitude, 
the right mentality in those situations. Like Josh mentioned, hey, you got to go finish, and those guys been doing a great job of finishing. And what's been fun to watch, too, as you mentioned him, and that's De'Aaron King. And, Josh, look, De'Aaron King, we knew what he was when he transferred here. We knew he was, he was a significantly uh, a very good college quarterback who had produced. We saw how good he was early in the season. But in money time now in the last four games, three, four games, he's just been almost lights out, and he's not making mistakes in the big moments. Yeah, come on. Come on, Mike. I think the thing we see, I think this is the De'Aaron King Miami, Miami fans wanted, hoped for, mm -hmm. you know, to be the quarterback of their team. I think that the hard thing for, for, for maybe all of us was, you know, not taking into consideration, you know, no off season, no spring, no summer, and not being instantaneous, right? And I think what we've seen is time. We've seen time and repetition. We've seen rhythm. We've seen everyone settling into their roles. And I think the best thing we've seen about the Eric King, we're seeing the full package, right? We're seeing a guy now in those last four games He's thrown the ball at almost a 70% clip in terms of completion rate. He doesn't really turn the ball over at all. He hasn't turned it over in the last four games. And we're seeing all of him, right? We're seeing not only the guy that can throw the football, but we're seeing the guy that can run the football and make plays with his feet. I mean, he had huge runs against NC State, the touchdown run against Virginia Tech. And I think that the, the biggest thing about on top of all of that uh, with the Eric King, you know, the dart here to Mark Pope, you know, we had the big throw to Mike Harley. So again, game winning plays at game winning time. And the numbers here Look reflect numbers. that. But I think the biggest thing that we are seeing with the Eric King, and Manny Diaz has mentioned this, Rhett Lashley has mentioned this, right? When you have a quarterback that your team believes in, when quarterback one is a dude, when quarterback one is a leader, when quarterback one fuels the team with confidence, you probably don't win those games on the road in the fourth quarter unless you have a guy like that. And I, I think we are seeing the importance of the player, the person, the leader. We've seen, you know, we've heard about his, you know, we've heard from his mom this year and what she's overcome. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing the ultimate package of both what's happening on the field and off the field and how that has lifted up this program. And I think we also are seeing, when we talked about having a quarterback and what that means, you now see what having De'Ara King means. And we also see why everyone asked the question, is he coming back? What's happening with De'Ara King next year? Is he coming back? <laughs> and that, that would be minute. monstrous. I don't, we don't, that's not a conversation point for today, but we all know if he came back, what that would mean for next year. It's significant. Hey, hey but Josh, but what I, what I like though, right? Because we, De'Ara King, like you just mentioned, these last four games, he took it to another level. And the reason why he took it to another level, because he needed help, right? Yeah. Early in the season, right, you saw the time. And that's one of the things with the whole COVID. It affected a new quarterback and you got receivers, right? Receivers is third offensive coordinator. So the timing yep. was off in the beginning. But now this thing is like, man, they went to Midas or went to Jiffy Lube and got a tune up and got the oil <laughs> change going, right? Because these receivers, man, have stepped up to the plate. I remember they was on the milk carton, especially when Brevin Jordan went down. You saw Brevin Jordan, you saw Will Mallory, you saw guys doing their thing. But, man, right here, the receivers and Mike uh, Mike Harley, Hardware Harley, baby, 89-yard touchdown catch against Duke, the fourth longest in UM history. These guys that came ready to play. And when, God, when Coach called them out at University of Virginia, heading into that game where he listed – for starters, he listed every eligible receiver that could be a starter. Those guys start taking it personal and start making things happen. Downtown D. Willie, he stepped up his game. Mike Harley, he stepped up his game. Uh, Mark baptized you like the Pope. Those guys just roll, <laughs> call, start making plays after plays, winning those 50-50 balls, making it happen. And then that was a stretch our offense, took our offense to the next level. It, it helped us so much because right here, this over-the-shoulder catch, right? I mean, this guy's in the zone, man. In the last four games, he had 26 catches, 479 for an average of 24.3 yards a catch, right, for four touches, right? Our receivers didn't have 100 yards early in the season. Mm -hmm. Now, right? Hey, and it, it could be a blessing, guy. With Brevin George get out, coach calling them out, these guys have stepped up now. The last four games, he, a receiver had 100 yards. Hey, a downtown D. Willie, uh, uh, D. Wiggins, excuse me, D. Willie, I feel like uh, a fresh <laughs> Prince of Bel Air around here, baby. Hey, he get it done, man. So these guys, man, they stepped up, they answered the call, right? And their development got better and better as you see it. And that's what's taking our offense to the next level. And by the way, we'll save it for later, but we'll talk defense too because I know that's Michael's favorite. The defense has been great, Jalen Phillips, Quincy Roche. We'll talk about the impact this defense has made and what they can hopefully do today against a very tough UNC team. Hurricanes game day rolls on right after this, but as we go to break, a little coast 
to Coast Kings. Hello, my name is Denari Middleton. I'm a fourth grader at Barack Obama Elementary School in Jackson, Mississippi. I am the ultimate Canes fan. Like I have my water bottle and my, um, my football and my entire room is University of Miami. And I have autographs of Miami, three autograph photos of Miami coaches. I like the players on the football team. I like Sebastian and I like the coach Manny Diaz. When I was five months old, I had my right kidney removed. Over the years, I have undergone 10 other surgeries. I won a national contest for my own superhero, the Kidney Man. The Kidney Man is a superhero I created so I can help sick children like I was, and he helped with like kidney disease, kids. And so he basically would like fly around in the sky and if he saw a kid, sick kid, he would drop magic raindrops on them and then they would become, they would feel much better. I got to meet two senators, Sidney Hyde Smith and Roger Wicker. I also got to go see the White House and the state capitol. I'm a huge Miami Hurricanes fan because I like the players. My entire room is the University of Miami theme, including my PS4. When I graduate from high school, I plan to attend the University of Miami School of Law and play football. I want to go to law school so I can try to become a judge and help people with their needs. Thank you for this opportunity. It's all about the youth. The COVID-19 pandemic has created challenges for all of us, but Canes are resilient. Canes are united. As an athletics department, we are facing significant financial challenges related to the pandemic, but we remain committed to our mission of building champions. We stand united in support of our young men and women and launched the Canes United COVID-19 Relief Initiative. Show your support of the Canes by making a gift today umcanesunited.com Sometimes ordinary tasks can become extraordinary feats. The Joint Chiropractic helps to keep you moving through everyday life and beyond. Visit today and receive your initial consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic. You're back, baby. Time for the breakdown segment with Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Coach, what do we have today? Well, Don, you're going to like this. We're going to start off with two great comeback stories. Um, guys that, you know, unfortunately you never want to see a player get hurt in college football. Uh, sometimes guys do. We've got a phenomenal medical staff. We've got a phenomenal training staff here at the University of Miami um, that can rehab these guys, get them back, and, and, and you want them to have the reward because that's a lot of lonely days uh, when the team's off practicing or lifting weights in this area and, you, and you're all out there alone. and um, But some guys, you know, worked hard and, and you, you want to see what they get in the game. And, and, and we saw it this week. And we'll start off with, I know, one of your favorites, Navon Donaldson. Oh, yeah. Good. So this is in the second quarter right here. And uh, Navon's come in at left tackle for Ja'Kai Clark. And, and, um, and just what you would ever what you would want to see out of a left guard and watch watch this block bang a linebacker goes to blitz and turns out that's a bad idea watch Navon lift this guy up off the ground and move him five yards deep in the backfield and then there goes a blur in the behind him that's cam harris running untouched in the end zone watch from the end zone don you'll love this 
Watch this block coming right here. Wow. Great job. Very nice. Big time effort. Watch DJ Scaife. You'll see, watch DJ finish off right yeah. here. Corey stumbles, but DJ does, I mean, striking his man, running his feet on contact. I mean, you know, I always say, you know, you watch the line, watch watch the the guys in the white helmets get past the line and just, and, I mean, look at this, look at that highway right there that Cam Harris can run through. Okay, coach, we can't forget Zion out there at left tackle. He does a great job, but go back to Navon. It's like you coach linebackers forever. What, how do you coach a linebacker to say when you hit this wall and you get moved backwards? What do you do? Yeah, don't run into a, don't run into a refrigerator. That'd be the first <laughs> thing I would tell him. I'd, I'd say I'd say you know try, try to pick a side. He tries to at the end, but you know. But to Navon's credit, he does a great job as a guy tries to come inside. He stays with them and and, and watch. And you know this. Just watch. You know the footwork. Coach yeah. Justice works on the footwork. Watch how he just takes short steps, keeps those feet moving after contact. And see how the feet don't stop right there. That's and that's where the power goes. And like I said. In every step, there's our training staff, David Feely, his staff, you know what I mean, and and and, and building, you know, Navon's strength back. Um, really nice job. You got to got also shout out J uh, Jared Williams here on the backside. Watch him cut his guy off right there. You know, by the time he tries to get free, Cam's gone. It's a really really nice job. Now we saw all the turnovers uh, from the game, and here's another one. Okay, and it's going to start off great defensive football. A lot of guys doing right. Okay, Quincy Roche slips a block and is in the backfield, which is exactly what we want because now the running back's got to run sideways, east and west, and that's how we become a, a great target for loss team every year. Wayman Steed is lined up out here at Will Linebacker against their tight end, and he's going to set an edge right here and turn this play back in to all of his pursuing Hurricanes. Watch, he does a nice job, sets an edge on the tight end, and what we always say at Miami, if we could play defensive football, pretend the football field only – was as wide as the numbers. How, how much easier would it be to, to defend that space? And if you know that, then all your teammates, all they ever have to do is run the length between the two numbers. It's a shorter field. It makes, makes, makes it much easier to play. So Wayman does a great job, great physical tackle, and that allows guys like Jade Silvera. We've talked about his effort on this show before. Watch Jade Silvera's effort comes out of the stack. Watch how no one in the defensive line ever breaks stride. Everyone full speed of the ball, bam. Violent two-man sandwich on the running back. But now, look, there's a ball on the ground. And watch the effort of Quincy Roche, Bubba Bolden, get on top of it right there and create the big turnover. The turnover chain comes out. But really, really proud moment for Wayman Steed. He's worked really, really hard, just like Navon has, to come back. Well, Coach, I don't think people realize he's been injured. Wayman's been injured, or if they have forgotten, he's been injured a long time. And to have his recovery and get back his reaction time like he has, he's completely overcome that injury. That's right. And it was, it was not a, an easy injury to, to overcome. It was a very difficult injury. And, again, to see him be able to move, bend, and strike like this will do wonders for his confidence as well. So I want to show you down next. I want to show you a little two-play sequence here from the third quarter. And it's going to end. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, give you the, the the ending. It's going to end with Mike Carley going for an 89 yard touchdown. But sometimes, like we talk about on this show, we like to kind of get under the hood and see a little bit about what sets it up. Okay. So this is the first play of the drive. We got the ball at our own nine yard line. Not ideal, right? So we run a, a running play here with Cam Harris. And this may not seem like a really good run by Cam, but it is. You know what I mean? It does a good job. It's not. You know, there's not a giant hole there. And sometimes the running back, you just got to put your foot in the ground, you know, sort of stick it in there and just go forward, right? Get the offense going, go forward, okay? What I want to point out to you, Don, right now is this person right there. That's right. You ever see who that is? That's Mike Harley, okay? So what's going to happen is, so the play's over, okay? There's the scoreboard shot. Here's the next play, all right? Mike Harley is now right here, okay? So now watch. So remember, he was standing over here. Obviously, there's been a little bit of time has elapsed, and we're right there. You see Miami is all lined up, which means that a guy like Mike had to sprint all the way across the football field to get to that spot. Now, the defensive backs that were covering him on the last play, okay, are all standing straight-legged. They don't have the call yet. The defense line, look at the offensive lines, ready to play. Defense line, not ready to play yet. And this is what tempo does to you. And if you don't practice against it, it is very difficult, okay, because Duke's got really good coaches. They know what they're doing. But, again, watch what happens. Late communication between the secondary and the ball snapped. So look at the position that 39 is in when the ball snapped. Not ready to play. 
And then all we run is two guys simply going vertical, and look what happens. Two guys take one guy. They have cut Mike Harley completely free. And if we didn't want to go to Mike, we've got D breaking th through wide open on a post route right here, but Mike wide open on the middle field. Now, Derek's still got to put it on. You mentioned this earlier. Accuracy, bang, boom. And that's an example of even on that first down play when, you, when we ran the zone play for two yards, what's that doing? That sets up our tempo. And going forward gets the tempo set up and for a guy like Mike to sprint all the way right there, he didn't know he was doing it to catch an 89-yard touchdown pass. But he did. And that's one of the cool things that this offense has brought to us. Coach, when you, when you look at this offense and what it does to the secondary, the tempo is really disrupts communication of an entire defense. And that you know from you being a coordinator for so many years, that creates problems if the defense can't communicate. Yeah, it absolutely does. And if you think about, and then, and then there's another problem, it tires out the defensive line. So when I'm not in the stance and I'm not really comfortable, Duke's got outstanding defensive ends. Number one and 51 are both really, really good players. But I'm not quite in a stance. I'm not quite comfortable, okay? And that allows, you know, a guy like Jared Williams to watch. Does a great job, pushes uh, the, the, the pass rusher by. Yep. And look at this pocket for Dierick. Now, yes, of course, I mean, they've cut Mike completely free. But, I mean, Dierick right here, I mean, I mean, that is untouched. That's as clean as you can get it. So, again, that's just how... You know, Duke's defensive line ab absolutely wore us out in this game a year ago, the reason why they won the football game. So you see how just little things make a difference and lead to the, the success we have. There you go. And it's fun when it's, it goes for 89. And then the last play I want to show you is this, and this is where you get a chance when you got some really special players um, to, to, to create some things for them. You know, so we get Duke in a third down situation. Okay, we're going to play man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, all the way across the board. They're trying to get right here to the to the 49 yard line. Okay, and just take it. You'll take a peek at the at the at the coverage for a second. So doing a pretty good job at, at three of the four spots. I want to point out a true freshman here. That's Isaiah Dunson, and watch him challenge. Look, watch that jam he gets on that wide receiver at the line of scrimmage. That is outstanding. Challenge, challenge, challenge. I mean, just all over that guy, all over the guy. We're not in great shape there. We're in really really good shape here. Okay. But by the, quarter, by the time the quarterback goes to hit his plant step on his drop, there's really nobody close to getting the first down that looks even, you know, possibly open, okay? But that's not the worst of his problems. Let's go to the end zone, Don. Let's find out what this guy's got going on, okay? So what we've done is this, and you can't see it a little bit because Amari Carter's in the way, but that's Quincy Roche, and then right here is Jalen Phillips lined up as a defensive tackle. And then we've got Corey Flagg, up here in the line of scrimmage as well. So Corey is going to blitz into the center and just by the center's eyes, just enough. See how the center's trying to work towards Jalen? Yes. And then we've isolated Jalen one-on-one on a guard, which is not really good news for the guard. Jalen does a great job of just dusting that guy. And then watch what Corey does. By the time the center goes to help, Corey's going to loop back around and finish the stunt right there. So even if the quarterback got away from Jalen, which, spoiler alert, he's not going to, Bang, gets hit right there like that. And you still got guys like Roche and, and Harvey providing that edge pressure. Really, really tough down to be a quarterback right here. Coach, what's it do, what's it do for number 11's confidence? Here he is, a guy that has played special teams for you. He's done a, as good a job as you can ask for, but now he is in the mix for a big play. That's right. And, and if you get on our third down defense, that says a lot about you. You know what I mean? And we're looking for guys that can make plays out here on this unit, trying to create special one-on-one -on -one matchups like we've done right here with Jalen. But if, if he doesn't do his part and engage the center, the center is going to turn and they're going to double-team Jalen. Right, and so we're 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 aware of that. So he's got to do a really nice job, you know, engaging right here in this gap to buy these two blocks to create the one on one for Jalen. So it's not just, you know, you know, being an athlete. You got to know what to do when you got to execute at a high level. And Corey and Jalen work this to perfection. All right, Coach. Thank you for your time. That does it for the breakdown segment with Head Coach Manny Diaz. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team, I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep you safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are, we're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. 
see a specialist today in person or virtually. Download the new Miami Hurricanes app today for the ultimate Canes fan experience. Welcome back to Hurricanes Game Day. We're getting you ready for the final regular season game day of the season. Right there at Hard Rock Stadium, the Canes 10th in the country against UNC. We'll talk much more about the present in a moment, but now it's time to take a walk down memory lane, Michael Barrow. And I'm just going to say the name Jimmy Johnson to you. What, what comes to mind? Uh, a commercial for hair, hair product, <laughs> gel. <laughs> no, man, what comes to mind, man, Hall of Fame coach. I mean, when you look at the definition of a coach, that when you go, uh, unlike you, Will, you travel first class. I travel in a bus, right? Yeah. And you sit in a call. A, a different word is called coach, right? And it takes you from one destination to the next. And that's Jimmy Johnson. Man, he's good at finding talent, developing talent, making sure talent shows up ready to play. And everywhere he's been, right, he takes from where they are to where they should be. University of Miami, all right, maintain the championship. We was able to win championship. Went to Dallas Cowboys, able to do the same thing. Man, I remember as a, as a freshman coming in, and you were like, Jimmy is just intense, man. He just walk around, and, and he let his coaches do the job. But every day, and that's the green tree mentality, whether it's practice or game, you came ready to play. He understood the importance of preparation, preventing poor performances, and he prepared you to be the best you could be. So it's no surprise in him coaching all the great players at Miami, going on to other careers, Dallas Cowboys coaching the triple those Hall of Fame players mm -hmm. because he's able, no matter who you are, take you for where you are, take you to where you should be. So many great Canes during that era, including yourself, and it is time to take a look back at that legacy of Jimmy Johnson. You think of all the great people that you coached or you coached with that you, and, and really for me and, and for us, I guess I could speak for, is the impact you had on those players. I mean, they, they impacted. He impacted my life hugely. You know, th those things are because of Jimmy Johnson. We got 75,000. There's one in every seat, and they came here to see Hurricane football. Get a drum on offense. Make sure it's a complete ball game today. A complete ball game from the very first whistle. Offense, defense, the kicking game. Let's go like a bunch of crazy men and play some games. Oh, yeah. I just think back to all the, the speeches and Thursday night speeches and the, the pre games and the Friday night up at Miami Lakes. Uh, I was always a uh, center about being the best. And, and that's what always rings in my memory about the 87 season, about walking off the field, being the best. How does it feel, Jimmy? I don't know. I can't feel anything. It's, it's fantastic. I say these guys, it's unbelievable what this University of Miami football team's been through the last four years. Everybody throws rocks at us, but I tell you what, they have got heart, they work so hard, and I tell you what, they showed exactly the type of people they are here tonight. It's unbelievable. Last night, but now it really gets cooking. Look at Jimmy Johnson. The demons are gone. He's a national championship coach. Locked in the ball. Irvin is open. Touchdown, Miami. You know, we played hard for 60 minutes in every game, regardless of the opponent, regardless of the score. But it made me a better coach. It, it really prepared me for the NFL. You know, I figured out that my strength was evaluating talent. That's what I learned about myself at the University of Miami is really play to my strength, evaluating talent. I think our players realized we were all in it together. They realized uh, you, you got to have credibility either from 
past performances or the way you work or your work ethic, the way you treat them, etc. And, and I had credibility with those players. I had credibility with all my players. And they knew I was going to work as hard, if not harder, than they were working. But you did what I asked you to do when we went out on the field. And that's to give it your all, play hurricane football. There's only one way we know how to play the game. But all we talk about is Miami hurricane football. I swear, he does not miss a beat on that. I mean, he can tell you, and his love for Miami and the university, I mean, his Super Bowls and Arkansas Hall, all that stuff might be nice, but there's, I know the place that's closest to his heart. There's no doubt about that. I didn't even know anything about Dade County or Broward County or South Florida. All I knew was Miami Beach. And, you know, I kind of like the idea of being close to the water, which I love, and being in a city, and especially for a program like University of Miami. I coached, you know, for 35 years or so, you know, throughout the country. And I don't know of any place that I ever coached or ever even, even visited that the players and the students and anybody that goes to University of Miami, especially with a athletic program have such love for the university and you look at the players the great players that have been at miami that come back and go on the sidelines and how much they love you know their school and everybody loves their school don't get me wrong but i think there's something special about miami As the official chiropractor of the Miami Hurricanes, the Joint Chiropractic presents Game Time Adjustments. Walk in and receive their new patient special, including consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. Or visit thejoint.com today. This year, the game plan is different. Hard Rock Stadium won't have all 65,000 of you bringing each game to life. But that can't stop you from making your presence as a Canes fan known. The Miami Hurricanes Team Store has everything you need for football in 2020. Find Canes apparel to wear for men, women, and kids. Represent the you wherever you are this football season. Shop now at shopmiamihurricanes.com. Download the new Miami Hurricanes app today for the ultimate Canes fan experience. As we welcome you back to Hurricanes Game Day, a look inside of Hard Rock Stadium where today the Miami Hurricanes on Senior Day, a showdown against UNC in their final regular season game and a lot is on the line. Will Manso alongside there, you see Michael Barrow and Josh Darrow taking you here up until kickoff on Hurricanes Game Day. And gentlemen, uh, we talked earlier about all the stuff that's gone on since last we talked and last we did the show and the Canes were at home. So as we go to our storm tracker, uh, you look and track we opened the show talking about it. I just mentioned it, Michael, how big this game is. It's significant in many ways. Revenge, sure, but big picture what this could be Miami and the national rankings and where they play in a bowl, the major bowl implications are what for Miami. It's a significant game. Yeah, no doubt. And the players, are, they understand what's, what's at stake here. Uh, talk to Coach Diaz, and one thing he mentioned, he said early in the week, you know, he always showed the ACC standings. He always talked about the possibility, right? And so they know what's at stake. They know what this game means. Uh, getting a victory today, North Carolina put them in a position to be part of a, a New Year's Six Bowl, right? Put them in a great position. That will be great for the program. Also affect recruiting. It will just have a big impact on everything. And you talk about this being senior day, right? 
And those seniors, man, they want to go out on top. They got an opportunity to do something really special. And there's no asterisk next to it just yeah. because of this whole COVID. Matter of fact, you need to get even more uh, of a, a higher grade just because to be able to maneuver through that. So they understand that. They, it's an opportunity. When we talked earlier about finishing strong, hey, we can finish strong right now. We got a great opportunity. You know, no matter what, we control our own destiny. We just got to take care of business today and we'll be right where we want to be. And Josh, to Michael's point, you know, where you want to be and how you want to finish, there's a bigger picture element to this as well that extends past the season, and that's recruiting. And, look, recruiting is difficult in these times with everything going on with COVID, but when a, a young player or a young student athlete is thinking about going to a school and they see the University of Miami in that top ten, they see the University of Miami in the spotlight of a New Year's Six game, it's significant. So when you tie that into it, Josh, and where Miami stands right now in the rankings, how, how important is that? It means everything, right? We, we've talked about it at, you know, multiple times, how you build your program. The, the winning, obviously, is, is the first thing. But the second thing is recruiting. And you got to stack class on top of class on top of class so that you have layers to your roster. And you look, you look right here, right? Miami's sitting at number 10. You look at the top line with Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Why are those teams at the top line? They have the most talent. Miami's trying to get there. And the best thing for Miami is to be in this position to take the next step. Remember a year ago, a year ago, we were in Shreveport. Okay, that's a whole different conversation than what we're talking about today, which is finish with a win against North Carolina and playing the Orange Bowl. Now you're on a national stage, primetime television. You're in the final conversation. You're in, you know, on the Tuesday when the rankings come out for the college football playoff committee, Miami is one of the teams that's being talked about and they're being talked about for a reason. Last year, that wasn't the case. The year mm -hmm. before, maybe that wasn't the case. Now Miami and Manny Diaz and Rhett Lashley and everybody else, the 21 class is pretty much put to bed. There might be one more big fish out there that they're trying to reel in. But when you beat North Carolina, or if you beat North Carolina and finish the job, you can like say we talked when. About, you can say when. <laughs> I, I like when. Yeah. When you? Well, I don't. I, I don't like to, to jinx that. I, I think like a coach, right? If we win, or should you win, uh, and you finish what you started, and you and you, you accomplish the goal, right, of, of having a, a nine and one season. Uh, and getting into that bull mix, really what that does now is you start looking at the 22 class or maybe even the 23 class, those people that you're in conversation with, now you can say it's not about what you say, it's about what you've done. Right now, instead of just visiting Miami because it's a cool trip to take, you're visiting Miami because you want to be a part of this program. You want to be the team that goes from a New, Year's, uh, a New Year's Six bowl game to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. You want to be part of the solution of taking this program to the next step. And that's how important this game is, right? This game sets up this year, but it really starts to elevate Miami for next year and the year after because of, Will, what you said, what it means for yeah. Miami in terms of layering in the talent so that they can go from 10 mm -hmm. to 4 or 10 to 4 to 2, right? Yeah. Now you're on that top line. That's kind of what, this is all a big setup, right? There are steps in, in place. There's the process of, of creating a, a perennial winner. That's what today is about. It is, and it's something to watch. And this, again, they continue to build and Miami in great position to be in a major bowl with a victory today. And that is part of what we followed since last we talked. And unfortunately, uh, with all the good that has come, there is some bad that has come. And, and look, we talk all the time about the University of Miami family. I think when people talk about recruiting, that's one thing. When you come to Miami, whether you're a student athlete or just a student in general, and, you know, Josh covering the, the team for years and the great players. I'm a proud alum who's had the chance to cover players throughout the years in these programs. And, Michael, you as an alum and a former player, you know what it's like to be part of the U family. And we lost a member of the U family in just the last few weeks. And Marcus Carey, just 48 years old, lost his battle with cancer a significant impact uh, when we lose anyone in the U family. But Michael, for you and hearing his death and, and what he meant to the program, your thoughts on, on the man Marcus Carey was? Yeah, I mean, I had opportunity to play with Marcus, man. Uh, he played safety for us, a part of two national championship team, uh, local here from uh, Palm Beach County. And, the thing, and then also he served in the community, man. He was a police officer mm -hmm. for 22 years. Uh, but Marcus, as a teammate, man, always smiling, man, that big old head, big old smile on his face, full of wisdom, man, common voice in those times, man, very mature for his age, very responsible, man. So my heart goes out to uh, his family, you know, his wife and his kids, man, and, and his friends. I'm part of a group chat with, uh, with, with a lot of other hurricanes, man, and 
uh, Daphnis and AC Tellus and a whole bunch of guys, man, to just uh, look at the comments and, man, people, man, just he would be deeply missed, man, just the impact that he had, uh, not just on the football field, uh, but also in the community, but also as a friend, as a husband, as a father, as a son. You know, did, did, we lost a great dude today. Well, I mean, this year, excuse me. Well said, Michael, indeed, uh, and someone in the U family that we certainly love, and we send our condolences to his family from everyone at the University of Miami, whether it be former players, former teammates of Marcus, and as Michael just mentioned, someone very significant in the South Florida community. Marcus Carey, may you rest in peace. Oh. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team. I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep us safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are. We're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually. Sometimes, ordinary tasks can become extraordinary feats. The Joint Chiropractic helps to keep you moving through everyday life and beyond. Visit today and receive your initial consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic. You're back, baby. Welcome back to Hurricanes game day. We're getting closer and closer to Miami football today from inside Hard Rock Stadium. The Canes and the Tar Heels will continue to preview the game and get you ready for what is a significant game for UM and trying to improve to 9-1 and one and get a chance to play in a major bowl. Will Manso, Michael Barrow, Josh Darrow here on Hurricanes game day. Guys, we're excited to be back and it's always fun to talk about a winning team and obviously the Canes are that, but when you look back not too long ago, and Josh, you referenced it just a couple segments ago of this team the I don't want to say the failures, but certainly the disappointment of last season and year one of Manny and the part of growth is learning from your mistakes. And when you look at the offseason, when you look at the production on the field, a year ago it was very easy to rip on Manny Diaz and it was done, whether fairly or unfairly, a lot by the media and by fans. But if you're going to be that person, you've got to also give Manny credit when he does the job, given everything that's gone on that he's done this year. So, Josh, when you see it, the changes – whether it be coaches, players, the product on the field, what stands out to you? Well, I think the first, if, you, if anyone that knows Manny and Mike's, you know, talked, to, you know, talked about how he's had conversations with him. I've had the good fortune of knowing Manny since he was the DC here under Mark Rick. Manny's a, he's a very aware person. You know, he, he, he's grounded in, in, in reality and he's kind of a normal uh, coach. Coaches are unique creatures. Michael knows that they can be a little hard headed. They kind of live in their own world. I think, Manny is very aware, and I mean that in a good way. And I think when you look at a head coach, what's their job? Their job is kind of create the environment, you know, in the room, so to speak. They, mm -hmm. they set the, the temperature. They create the culture. What do they want the, the kind of the vibe for their team to be when, when they're in the building? And then obviously you've got to hire the right people. And I think when you look at a coach, when a move goes wrong, there's one or two ways to react. Some coaches kind of dig in. Right, they dig in, they go, no, no, it's my way or the highway. I'm not listening to anybody else. This is right, I know what's going on, and they press forward. Or they, they, they kind of come to the realization that maybe they made a mistake. A move and a change is needed, and Manny Diaz did that, and he, very, he did that very quickly, and he was very decisive. So I think you have to give Manny Diaz a lot of credit for that. He knew something wasn't right, he made a change, and then he went out and he made a great hire, and I think everyone can applaud him for Rhett Lashley. I think the other thing he did that maybe goes a little bit unnoticed, he changed, he changed the staffing in the recruiting department. Uh, he kind of went out, he, he kind of cleaned house in, in, that, in that room, and, and he brought in guys that really weren't just scouting, but they were also recruiting. So they're working for the coaches while the coaches are coaching. They're developing and nurturing relationships and setting up the coaches who are else also following through. So he, he kind of revamped the recruiting department. He made a change with his coaching staff. 
Okay, and then I think the other thing too, which he has had success with, is he got he went he went back into the portal again. And, and I and I think once again he figured out a way. Look, um, we were not coming off a very good season. We still need to acquire talent. We have some deficiencies in our roster. And once again he went to the portal and he found answers. Yeah, and one of the answers, obviously, to Eric King. And when you look on the defensive side of the ball, Michael, I promise we talk defense and some of the impact players. And he went into the portal a couple of years ago. We got Jalen Phillips, and we're seeing the impact he's had. We went into the portal. We got Quincy Roche. We've seen the impact he's had. The bottom line is you can go in the portal and get players, but it doesn't mean the players are going to be good. The players Manny has gotten right. have been very, very good of late. Yeah, no doubt, man. You're talking about going to portal, man. It's equivalent to free agent signing in the <laughs> NFL, man. It's huge. Uh, recruiting is more like the draft, but this Porter is like phrase and signing, man. And and you heard Jimmy on that piece as far as doing a good job of evaluating talent, and he did a great job of evaluating talent because everybody he brought in made pay dividends from Derek King to Jose Borregales, but I'm not Italian, right? <laughs> uh, to uh, to uh, Williams, the right tackle, and then and then you talk about Quincy Roche, but one guy that he had to put on Lelway because he couldn't play right away when he transferred, uh, came in, uh, was Jalen Phillips. And Jalen Phillips, man, he must think it's still Halloween because he is playing like a werewolf, man. This guy, man, for the last three games, all right, he's been dominating with 22 tackles, nine tackles for loss. Uh, six sacks, man. He just took his game to the next level. And, man, this guy, man, having big impact. And you know what the thing I like about it? You know, uh, he didn't shy away from it. He said, man, we talking about uh, 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 Ro- Ro- excuse me, uh, uh, Roche, uh, uh, the impact he having. And then uh, Jalen feels like, look, give me number 15, all right? Give me Russo, all right? No, never mind. I want the pressure on me. I'm going <laughs> to take his number, and I'm going to take it to the next level. And that's what he did. And talking to Manny Diaz, right, Manny says since he's been here as a coach, Jalen Phillips is by far the best defensive player he's coached so far. That's a scary thought. And the reason why he said that is not just because his athleticism. He said because he's relentless to the ball. He plays hard. And you look at his game, right, it's complete. Not only does he go after the quarterback and get sacks, right, but he plays the run just as effectively as well. So this guy's a complete player. Like I said, it must be Halloween because this joker is a werewolf. Oh, right? <laughs> and he is getting it done, man. He is getting it done. And he was a big-time accusation for us. And you think about it, you say this, just a few years ago of Hit Rewind, right, mm-hmm. the whole thing, he dealt with the injury, really gave up on football. Yep. And then he resurrected his career, man. He's getting it done. Maybe he's, maybe I should call him Frankenstein because he came back to life, huh? And by the way, I want to note, note one thing because uh, we had mentioned it earlier. I want to make sure we mention this too is that is give Manny credit for what he's dealt with with COVID-19. And not that we have to have a deep yes. discussion because I think we all know. But just given what happened recently with Al Blades, you know, Al, Al announcing that he's going to, uh, that he's dealing with myocardia, uh, making that announcement via social media. As of last week, I was going through COVID protocols. Doctors had concerns about my blood work. You see him there undergoing the MRI of the heart, was diagnosed with myocardia. Uh, myocardia and you see there, he's saying that he's going to be out a minimum of three months, which means he's out the remainder of the season. But the, the bottom line is this. Uh, it has been a difficult year when you hear things like that. Again, these are I know these are players, but they're young men, they're student athletes, they're, they're family uh, to Manny Diaz. And the way that he's been able to navigate through these very difficult times and having to deal with everything with COVID, we understand the reason we didn't see each other for weeks is because the team had to deal with with the COVID issue as so many other programs, so the other pro teams as well about to deal with. So credit to Manny Diaz. We wish Al the best, by the way, in his recovery. We look forward to seeing him play some football very soon, again, when he is healthy. All right, when we come back here on Hurricanes Game Day, we'll continue to uh, preview this game against UNC, including some enemy intel after this. In our last U Health Canes checkup with Dr. Kaplan, he talked about the relationship with the University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute and the University of Miami Athletics Department. Now he's here to talk about one of his favorite success stories so far in his career. I'm seeing multiple players go on and play in the NFL and oftentimes that second contract being really life-changing money for their families and, and generational wealth as they call it. But I also take great pride in their getting their education. I think it's really important, and I think UM does a great job in doing that so that when they get done. So one of the most fun things I had was Duke Johnson, who had a very serious injury in the 2013 game um, against uh, Florida State. Duke got injured, but he wound up coming back the next year. He was the leading rusher ever. He went on to play for the Browns, and I was with the Texans. 
for me, watching people go on in their lives is, is important. I get, I have great pride. You know, I, I think we're really the roadies. You know, we were a rock band. We're not part of the band. Um, but seeing athletes out there playing after they've been injured and knowing they can come back and be successful and then go on, uh, hopefully it takes them to the NFL or the NBA or the WNBA or professional track or professional baseball, if that's what they want. But utilizing the, the life skills they learn in our athletic department to go on, I think is critical. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. This year, the game plan is different. Hard Rock Stadium won't have all 65,000 of you bringing each game to life. But that can't stop you from making your presence as a Canes fan known. The Miami Hurricanes Team Store has everything you need for football in 2020. Find Canes apparel to wear for men, women, and kids. Represent the U wherever you are this football season. Shop now at shopmiamihurricanes.com. Place. Even when it's empty and quiet as it is right now as the Canes and the Tar Heels get ready for a showdown at 3.30, a little after 3.30 kickoff from Hard Rock Stadium, the regular season finale for the Hurricanes. But they got some big plans if they can win this game, and that would be uh, potentially an Orange Bowl appearance. We hope to see that. Well, man, so glad to see you here alongside Michael Barrow and Josh Darrow. I mentioned earlier, we'll talk some enemy intel later and get you ready for UNC in the game. But guys, we want to talk now and spend a few minutes about something that's very important and maybe more important than ever, and that's the strength and conditioning and the way guys get ready and the advantages that teams have and players have. And Michael, you lived it as a player. Josh, you see it as well in, in, in talking to these young men and how they, when they get to Miami and what they become when they leave Miami as far as strength goes. And talking to, to, to David Feely and seeing a bit of what Miami does, what's the key for Miami and what they've tried to develop with their strength and conditioning? Well, I think this year has been unique. Let's, let's, let's talk about kind of every, you know, everything about this year has been unique and, and certainly it played a part in how David Feely and Manny Diaz ran the weight room for the University of Miami. And typically, you know, when, when you think of a strength and conditioning coach, it's about grinding their players, right? Grind, grind, grind to kind of build them up. But this year, you know, when the players went away in the spring and the summer, they were all working out on their own. When they all came back, it was very player-centric focused. It wasn't really about breaking them down. It was about being very sensitive and aware and keen that they had to build them up, right? They had to kind of manage them back to being the elite athletes that they were so they would not have to deal with any injuries. The phrase that David Feely and Manny Diaz used was microdosing. You know, they gave them kind of a little bit of intensity, a little bit of volume, mm -hmm. and kind of microdosed the workouts to get the players back to a level where they would feel comfortable, where then they can take on more so that they could perform on the field. It's this a, happened over the summer, yeah. right when they came back. It just happened to two weeks ago when, when, when the coronavirus hit the team and, and games were called off. And Manny Diaz used the phrase, well, I know you're an NBA guy, but you're also a baseball guy. He said every player has their own pitch count, yeah. right? So everyone was managed individually because nobody was on the same path. Got, some guys were, were cleared to come back and, and work out. Some guys weren't. Everything's been staggered this year. Some guys haven't been cleared to the day before a game. So I think this year, having a feel for your players and your team, your mm -hmm. weight room, all of it, right? Really being in touch with your program, really being aware, sensitive to what's going on, that this year is not the same. And I think Manny Diaz and David Feely deserve a lot of credit for that. And it's different. You know, you mentioned, look, this year's a unique challenge. This is not like any other year. And, Michael, you, know, you go back to you played and as a coach at the highest levels. And when you see what strength and conditioning is, you referenced it earlier. For those who didn't see it uh, and hear it earlier, that a Florida State player told you, like, man, you know, about getting tired and being in late in games in those fourth quarter finishing. That does start in the weight room and in the training and the conditioning. As you watch it evolve and change, it is still a significant advantage that the University of Miami tries to take advantage, advantage of, I should say. How do they do that? Yeah, I mean, like 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 Josh just said, man, they're on top of it. I mean, when you talk about pitch count, because especially during these times with the whole COVID, you got to pause, restart, you got to do this. Yeah. You really don't have a foundational base. Because typically, when I get, re get ready for an NFL season when I play, 
I mean, it started in uh, right when the season over in February. And I used that time from February all the way up until the season started to build a foundation. Well, now a lot of times you're you're uh, the players now because of the COVID, because of the distance and the stop and start, mm -hmm. you're trusting the players to get that done. So the relationship with the strength and conditioning coach is like one of the lifelines of the program. He's got to make sure he's communicating, make sure they understand exactly what they need to do to stay prepared and motivate those guys during these tough times. Like Josh mentioned, hey, they just had a three-week break in season. That's unheard of, right? But so then now you got to stay in, in football shape during those times, right? You got to fight COVID. You got to fight this and that. And on top of that, and then you still got to be football ready to go. I mean, I, he earned his paycheck today. But that's the thing about it. I love what I just heard from Josh and everything that said that they had a plan. Talking to Manny, the biggest thing Manny said that you have to do these times of COVID is be flexible. And the <laughs> flexibility in that is outstanding. And they did a great job because this is new territory for everybody. But staying flexible during the time is enabling them to be successful. And you seeing the result on the field. And you seeing the result like we talked about early as far as them finishing in the fourth quarter because they're on top of it. I, I think be flexible is probably a good model for any business, any person, any money <laughs> in the year 2020 is you never know what's coming next. Certainly be flexible. We know what's coming next for us. And that is a look at, you know, talk strength, conditioning, nutrition also helps. The University of Miami has a great setup with a nutrition center presented by Gatorade. My name is Erica Rabul and I am the sports nutrition coordinator here at the University of Miami. My name is Kyle Bellamy and I am head of nutrition for football. I am an exercise physiologist and registered dietitian. My goal is to use nutrition as a tool to enhance performance on the field and improve quality of life off the field. A big part of what we do is through the, their workouts and their training, making sure that they're getting the proper nutrition before a workout, their proper nutrition and hydration during a workout, and then their recovery post-workout to maximize what they're doing in the weight room. Here at the U, we feel champions. I work interdisciplinary with our support staff here, with athletic trainers, physical therapists, physicians, and we create a interdisciplinary approach. Every day, the Nutrition Center is open from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the athletes can come pre-practice, pre-workout, come in here post-workout, grab their snacks for recovery, and grab their snacks to be able to get ready for practice. It's been amazing being able to provide high quality products to our athletes. Gatorade has helped us tremendously in being able to provide high quality products to our athletes. The Gatorade products is, is, is really tremendous. It's a product that the athletes really, really like. Matching the macronutrient composition of their products, um, what's needed pre-training, post-training, and intra-training. Um, we look at recovery, refueling, rehydrating, and repairing. Those are our four R's for recovery. And they're able to provide a product to help really achieve those goals. It's a blessing to have Gatorade as, as a partner because it just makes our job that much easier. The COVID-19 pandemic has created challenges for all of us, but Canes are resilient. Canes are united. As an athletics department, we are facing significant financial challenges related to the pandemic, but we remain committed to our mission of building champions. We stand united in support of our young men and women and launched the Canes United COVID-19 Relief Initiative. Show your support of the Canes by making a gift today at umgamesunited.com.
see that urgency. Huh? Everything he does. What you gonna say? What you gonna say? I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive. You're supposed to say, I learn. I see. I learn. The bye week is a week to look myself in the mirror and say, what am I doing? Who am I? For real. The tape says to play you. Now you gotta continue to do it. Go this way. Get your eyes, Gavin. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Tag it up. Tag it up. Tag it up. Keep going, Avery. Two hits. Hey, two hits and backpedal. Go, go. Pass some DJ. Pass some DJ. Too many times on film, we're standing tall, either at the top of the break or even at the beginning of the play. So, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna pedal, break. So we'll pedal, foot in the ground, break, bang. Here, pedal, foot in the ground, T-step, bang. And I'm gonna finish with the get it on the grill drill. Get it on the ground drill. Got it? Now I'm gonna finish, girl. That only time my body, my torso gets above my knee is when I got problems. That's when I dive, and so all my centers out here. I keep my torso behind my near toe and finish in this position, always. I'm powerful here, I'm off balance here. One, come on, go. Near toe. Good. Hey, tuck in a little bit of Mari, again and widen a little bit. Grab it, take this foot, and drive it forward. Break back downhill, but bail him. Bail him, not down the line at an angle. You understand? One more time. Got it? Hand second and then not losing my eyes somewhere. Gotta trust that, you understand? Gotta sit in there and trust that. Here we go. Push, 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 inch back. Good. Gerb, bump! Hey, Gerb, you see what he did on the pivot? He looked in the backfield. Drive the pivot. Been in our hips at the point of contact. Got it? You got, you got four. Two, three, four. So you got four to the right. Sell it, Larry. Sell it, wait. Now! Eyes. Sit in there, Gerb. Sit in there. Right, Gerb. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Eyes, I'm ready, get them over there. Don't even look over here. Get to the ball, get to the ball. Good, here we go, get a stance. Already be ready, push for depth. Eyes weave, hold it, hold it, hold it, break. Seal it, come out the post and cover them. Good job. Good, now fight it out. Good, drive it. Yes, had a way to drive. Now look back, pop with your hands. Stop all the walking around. Talk, get to your spot. Hey, get set a little quicker. Got me? We just tackle. Good job. And then if it's a bad throw, we bring, we bat it up. We, we break it up. But he's got to put it on there perfect. Here we go. Chop it out. Let's bounce. Go turn and run. Okay. Get a break. Amari, get us out of here. As we welcome you back here to Hurricanes Game Day, Will Manso, Josh Farrow, and uh, or Michael. Did I just call you Josh Farrow? <laughs> well, yeah. it only that took me mother, six mother, shows. Mother. That's Can right. I pride Darryl myself. Darryl I pride myself on not messing up, and I, it took That's me six years. Okay. That's six okay. That's okay. Me and Mike have a long hit. We're like family. We're basically like right. family. You guys are like family. Okay. Yeah. And I'm the man in the middle. So we're Mike good. Mike Barrow and Josh Darrow. It, it, it only took me six shows to screw it up, but I got I, I, I got it there. As we go back to Hurricanes game day, guys, we're going to get into enemy intel in a second. I do want to point out, though, the unavailability report from Miami released. Thankfully, it's a short list. Unfortunately, it includes Jalen Knighton who uh, for Miami, young running back, so talented. At the remainder of the season, this game and the bowl game with a shoulder injury, it'll give another opportunity for Don Chaney to step up to that role behind Cam Harris. Uh, all right, so let's get to enemy intel. And Josh, you know, when you talk about this game, UNC is a highly thought of team and in the top 20, not for their defense. And we'll talk defense later. It is certainly, though, the offense and what they do. And it's led by a quarterback that I think kind of gets lost in the shuffle of big-time quarterbacks in the ACC uh, and Sam Howell, what he could do for this offense. Uh, well, if anyone was at the game a year ago, I know Michael was there, I was there. It, was, it didn't take a lot uh, to, to watch if Sam Howell was a freshman a year ago to know that, that North Carolina had a special quarterback. We talked about Miami and De'Ara King having QB1. North Carolina has QB1. And they're, they're, they're offensively, they're special. I mean, they're elite. Uh, they're not elite just when you watch the film. They're elite when you look at the numbers. I mean, Mike talked about it back in the – early part of the show, they're, they're over 40 points a game. But how about this? They've had games this year where they've, had, they've not only gone for over 600 yards against Wake Forest, they went for over 700 yards. I mean, they put up yards in a hurry, and they are one of the most explosive teams in the country. And if you just, you know, just back to what you said about Sam Howell, Will, only two quarterbacks in their first two years have thrown more touchdown passes than Sam Howell. Their name are Trevor Lawrence and Jameis Winston. That's a pretty good category. A pretty good category to be in. And then also... For a true freshman, he has set the FBS record for most touchdown passes thrown. Sam Howell, you talk to the Miami coaches, they just say he's a baller. Look at the numbers there, 26 touchdowns, six interceptions. He doesn't turn the ball over. 
I mean, he, he's very low touchdown to interception, which is great. He also can do this, right? This is going to be a problem. You talk about him throwing the football and they run the RPO game, but he can also manipulate the pocket with his feet, especially in the red zone. But then he just puts the ball up and he makes uh, his players the ability to make plays. He loves throwing the ball over the middle of the field. He loves throwing slants. He throws a beautiful deep ball. But then when the pocket collapses, he can do this, right? He can escape. He can elude pressure. He can make plays. He can extend plays. He can buy time. He can let the coverage break down and throw the ball down the field. When he gets into the red zone, he's dangerous as well. But then he does this, right? This is what he's special at. Throwing the ball down the field uh, to his wide receivers who are elite. Sam Howell is a special player. He's one of the best quarterbacks in college football. Forget the ACC. Mm -hmm. He is one of the best quarterbacks in college football. And North Carolina has a very special player at that position. And when you look at who's throwing to, you mentioned his deep ball ability. Wide receiver, when you watch them, Josh, and what they do, he's, that's the thing. And we'll get to the running backs in a second, but they've got playmakers. It's not just a QB who makes no. the most out of his talent. It's a QB who has a lot of talent around them. I mean, this is about as good as offense as you're going to get. You put it right up against Clemson. We talked about how good Clemson was. This Carolina's offense is right there. You might even say as a group it could be better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they have ETN. They got the two running backs that Michael's going to talk about. Those guys are good. And as a collection, you look at the wide receiver group, it goes four deep. Now, it starts with Deami Brown and Daz Newsome. That, you know, Deami Brown's number two in the ACC in touchdowns and yards per catch. And last year, he beat Trajan Bandy on a double move. Daz Newsome caught the game-winning touchdown. So, again, last year you knew how special these wide receivers are. Now, the offensive system helps them out. The, the RPO game is insane. It really puts a lot of stress on any defense and will put stress on Miami's defense today, especially without Al Blades. But these guys have what I call uh-oh speed. So uh-oh speed is this. You watch the film, you see them run by DBs. You prepare for them to go on the field, and then they run by you and you go, uh-oh, I can't cover this guy. Because Daz Newsom, Deami Brown, Deami's brother, Chopri, Emery Simmons, these guys are all special talents. They'll go up and fight for the football like, like Daz Newsom is doing right here. They will make plays in space. They can take a slant and go to the house. They did that against Virginia, as you're going to see right here. They can also uh, take the ball down the field and, and, and score big touchdowns and make big plays. So this group, a, a, as a package, is uber talented. I mean, Sam Howell has a bunch of dudes to throw it to. And once they get the ball in their hands, they're doing this. Yeah, I'm, going, so all huge, all. I'm going all over watching these highlights. A <laughs> huge key for Miami is on, let, let's say, that play right there, is that that has to be a 15-yard play and not a 70-yard play. Miami's got to make tackles today against these UNC wide receivers, and they cannot let guys run open in space. But, but when you watch the film uh, of North Carolina as we got ready for this game, and I know Michael saw it with the receivers, and he's going to talk about it with the running backs as well. These guys are really, really good. I mean, really, really good. They're fun to watch in terms of preparation. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm Blake Baker, it's some late nights in the office. Uh, but as a group, between Howell, the receivers, and, and Michael's going to mention the running backs, uh, some of the best in all, in all the land. This is a super talented group, and they're highly explosive. Michael, I'll send it to you with those backs because it's one thing. Uh, oftentimes, you have a good offense. At least you could say, okay, they're one-dimensional. Their quarterback's very right. good. Their wide receivers are very good. And you attack that, and you don't have to worry about the ground game. But they've got a one-two punch at running back that's significant enough. This is a diverse offense. This isn't just a one, you know, tri you know, one, uh, right. one element of it that you've got right. to concentrate on. Right. Just one thing. They've got everything. And when you look at the running backs, how much more of a challenge does it make it? That's what I'm saying. And, and this running back position, man, this dynamic duel they got on the running back is the key to victory for this game, right? And the losses that you see, man, uh, two, of the, two of the three losses because they didn't rush over 100 yards. When they're running the ball well, man, they're hard to stop. And these running backs is arguably like the two best backs in the country, man. I call them I call them mashed potatoes and gravy, right? <laughs> number, 20, number 25 Williams, man, he is a grown man. All right, he's a grown man. You can't bring paper plates when you try to tackle this dude, man. He gets it done, man. He moves the chains, right? He's the only guy right now in college football that has over 900 yards rushing and 300 yards receiving. 
right? That's how dynamic they are. They're just not one trick pony, right? They get it done, man. And look at him, man. This is what I'm talking about. When I call him Master Tate, because when you try to tackle him, he smash your he smash your head to the ground, right? Look <laughs> at that stiff arm. He's 5'10, 225 pounds, and you see this a lot. He leads the nation in broken tackles with 63. And he gets it done. He's and he also second in the nation with 19 touchdowns, 16, 16 touchdowns rushing and three receptions. So and then you can you sleep on the power where you think, okay, he's about to run you over. He's got the speed to take it to the house. So we're gonna have our hands full. And then now, number eight, hey, he's gravy, man. He's lightning in a bottle a bottle. Michael Carter, look at him, man. You better pick up the jock strap, right? Because right now he got the juke move and he can take it to the house. He can score anywhere on the field. And he's also a double threat, not only running ball, but out of the backfield catching the ball. So definitely, man, this is a big challenge for us. And like I said earlier, one of the keys to this game is that we got to stop the run and we got to tackle these dudes and we got to make it physical and we got to make it one dimensional because this is a balanced offense and they get it done. It's the reason why they're the number one uh, uh, yardage offense in the ACC and one of the top offenses in the nation. And those two guys I mentioned, man, yeah. oh, that dynamic tool, they're a big part of their success. Michael, glad you mentioned that. You both hit on, on how dynamic they are. When you say make them one-dimensional, though, is it is it the ground game that you look to stop first, or is it the pass game you look to stop first? Or does, it always, does it always start with slowing down the ground game when you're trying to stop a dynamic offense? Well, when you look at Notre Dame, Notre Dame gave us a blueprint on how to stop when they they stop they stopped the run. They limited on a run, limited on 58 yards second half for the uh, of the uh, for the second half of the game, right? But you got to stop the run because when you look at statistics, like I just told you, mm -hmm. they're the same. I hope they don't recognize it because I'm like, why they not running the ball, right? Yeah. But when they run the ball, right, they make it hard for, for teams. You look at Virginia Tech and you see how stingy that defense was against us. Both of these guys had career days against them. All right, Carter, lightning in the bottle, gravy, had 214 yards, and not by, far behind, Williams had 160-something yards. And they, they, they be, end up being Virginia Tech. So to me, when you got to pick one poison, it's stopping the run first, yeah. right? Make it one-dimensional, stay on top on defense, and get it done. Yeah, as you mentioned, those stats back it up. I mean, when they get stopped, they tend to have struggles offensively, and that's the way hopefully it will happen for Miami today when we come back here in Hurricanes game day. We'll turn our attention to enemy intel on the defensive side, what UNC does get ready, and what Mike. Miami can do against that defense. Get ready, Mike. You, you, you. Download the new Miami Hurricanes app today for the ultimate Canes fan experience. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team, I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep you safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are, we're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually. Oh, yeah, Brevin Jordan, the Hurricanes. By the way, look, look at, at these that. uniforms. Woo! Look at those right, helmets. Man. Wow. Man, I want to throw, I can't hit anybody, but I, I want to throw those uniforms on at least look good at Look at that. I, I won't be hitting anyone, that's for sure. As the Hurricanes ready to hit somebody and make some plays, those uniforms, you know what, all the uniforms they've had, these, these different color schemes and the ultimate uniforms, these might be my favorite, guys. Those are nice. That is a sharp, those sharp sword. Sweet. Yeah, very, very nice. And they'll look better in a victory, and hopefully they get oh, yeah. it against UNC. Will Manso. Michael Darrow and Josh Darrow getting you ready here on Hurricanes game day. We just heard the enemy intel, the offensive side of the ball. And look, we could fill 25 minutes talking about UNC's offense because it's that good, that dynamic. But Michael, when you look at their defense, 
that's where if you're Miami, not this isn't to, to disparage and say that they're not a good defense, but they're certainly a defense that you can right. take advantage of at times. So the overview defensively when you look at UNC is what? Yeah, I mean overall right now you look at an overview of uh, them defensively. They run a they start off running three four front right mm -hmm. multiple front stuff like that. And then as the season progressed, man, they kind of did the Houston Rocket technique. They went small ball right. And so now pr pr primarily they only have two uh, defensive linemen right. But then what they do they got five linebackers. So what they decided is they go small ball and get more speed on the ball right. So speed swarming right. Da da da. It's like who sunk my battleship? I mean they're sending. <laughs> blitzes and stuff everywhere and then what they try to do off the blitzes right is try to do uh trap coverage where they'll try to do to try, try to fool you get you to throw the hot into the flat but they got a corner sitting right there in the roll cover too so they try to do a lot of things multiple wise to try to confuse you especially when they started doing a bit a blitz package but one of the keys though right is that they quarterback on defense, right? Surratt, number 21. And literally, right, he came to North, he was st North Carolina starting quarterback at one point. I know Josh did a great job, but this guy's a playmaker, man. He made the transition last year uh, the, uh, from quarterback to defense. And what he did, he ended up being all ACC uh, linebacker, right? And then this year, he was semi-buckets finalist, right? So this guy's a playmaker. He's all uh, always around the ball. He leads the team in tackle as well as sacks with six six sacks for the season and they use them a lot man they send them great feel for the ball great uh, uh, tenacity getting to the ball hunger man this guy is definitely the quarterback of the defense as, as he go that's how their defense go they try to do a lot of different packages try to use them in a lot of different ways man but this guy is clearly right the heartbeat of this defense we gotta be we gotta be conscious of where he is because this guy could be a, a disruptive player, right? And then also the other thing, he's got help, man, with their front seven, right? I already told you they like to do a lot of things up front, like do a lot of line stance and stuff like that. So like I said, it's like who sunk my battleship, and he's got a partner in crime, uh, number 44 Gilman. He gets it done right here, blitzing. He's a great middle linebacker, but then up front. Right, they got the Fox Brothers, number 12, outside linebacker. He's second on the team in tackles with 5.5. And then he's got a younger brother who's really bigger than him, number 56. It's, don't get nervous. It's not Lawrence Taylor, but it's Fox <laughs> too, man. And they get it done, man. These guys, man, they're relentless. Hey, they swarm to the ball. They try to create habits, right? But because they're so aggressive, right, it's going to give us some opportunity to hit them over top and make something happen. They're prone to give up the big plays, but we got to protect our quarterback to have some success. We got to win up front with the line of scrimmage. That front seven so important, uh, and you got to take advantage of that, again, on offense for Miami of that defense at some point in this game. And, and you would think it also means, Josh, taking shots for Miami's offense, taking some shots downfield, working that middle to back of the field. Uh, UNC's defensive backs, when you look at what the resistance they provide there or what they do, what do you see, Josh, when you watch the video? Well, Mike mentioned there's going to be some opportunities for Miami to make some plays. I think not only in the passing game, actually, I think there's going to be opportunities for them to make plays in the running game in part because of North Carolina's secondary. You'll see them with five defensive backs on the field at times. They'll definitely mix up their coverages. They play a good, they play a decent amount of man. So, again, we've talked about the emergence of Miami's wide receivers. They're going to have to continue to be playing at the high level we have seen them play at over the last four games. North Carolina's secondary, I think the first thing that jumps out about them is that they're young. It's a lot of freshmen and sophomores back there, but they will lay the wood, they will hit. They, you know, you talk to the coaching staff, they've got some good length back there, they got some good size, they, they play very physical, they're very aggressive. So they're, they have some building blocks uh, back there on the back end of the secondary. I mean, they got a kid, Tony Grimes, who shouldn't even be playing college football. He's a freshman quarterback that's playing high ACC football. He reclassified a year early to get to get onto campus and start playing. So uh, they've definitely got some guys back there that can play football. They will they will definitely uh, jump routes. They definitely are aggressive trying uh, to play the football. But at the same time, if you're at the University of Miami, as Michael alluded to, they've got to make plays in the passing game. Uh, do the Hurricanes today, which means Mike Harley, you know, his boy D. Willie, the Pope, Mark Pope, even the, the tight ends. I think the thing we saw a week ago, having Brevin Jordan teamed with Will Mallory is huge uh, for the University of Miami. And I think there's going to, you, you've seen opposing teams 
hurt North Carolina in the middle of the field. But here's where I think Miami can also have success with North Carolina's secondary. They play, uh, they take some bad angles, play with bad leverage. They let plays either bounce to the outside or cut back. You see Virginia Tech here. Herbert was able to take one to the house. I think Cam Harris, Don Chaney, and even De'Ara King in the quarterback run game are going to have opportunities. And then the 50-50 balls down the field, uh, there are going to be opportunities for Miami uh, to make plays in the deep passing game. North Carolina also likes to blitz their cornerbacks. They'll bring quarterbacks off the edge. So if De'Ara King is reading it right, uh, he should be able to find some open guys, and that should create opportunities for the University of Miami today. Opportunities will be there. Miami has to take advantage of it. We will see if they do. We'll continue to get you ready for the Hurricanes in UNC. What's next? You know what we got? Are you getting it out? So that's you, what I think is next. Yeah! 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 Michael Barrow's got his keys to the game coming your way. But as we go to break your Hurricanes game day, how about a little hometown hero? My name is Sean Marcotte Sr., uh, born and raised in Miami, oh, wow. and uh, I currently reside in Miami. My name is Sean Marcotte Jr. My hometown is Miami, Florida, and current city of residence is Miami, Florida. I served in the U.S. Army for 30 years and retired as a full bird colonel. I was a U.S. Army helicopter pilot for six years and 24 years as a civil affairs officer. I served in the Middle East. Korea, and all throughout South America. I served in the U.S. Army as well. Uh, my length of service was eight years and retiring specialist. I worked as an all-source intelligence analyst. I was based out of U.S. Southern Command here in Miami, Florida. My regions that I served in was uh, Central America. I deployed to Honduras in 2015 and then the Middle East to Afghanistan in 2019, which I returned this past December from. So my fondest memories are uh, the moments where my family was around me from when my dad pinned my airborne wings to seeing my family at my retirement ceremony at U.S. Southcom, going to my son's basic training and military intel uh, graduation ceremonies. I'm again thrilled that the U recognizes service members and thank you to the administration for, for supporting this, this program. With any luck, we can inspire young men and women, maybe some who are watching today, to consider answering the call of duty. That's something really special. Go, go Canes, go, go Army, Army and go, go USA. USA. This year, the game plan is different. Hard Rock Stadium won't have all 65,000 of you bringing each game to life. But that can't stop you from making your presence as a Canes fan known. The Miami Hurricanes Team Store has everything you need for football in 2020. Find Canes apparel to wear for men, women, and kids. Represent the you wherever you are this football season. Shop now at shopmiamihurricanes.com. Sometimes, ordinary tasks can become extraordinary feats. The Joint Chiropractic helps to keep you moving through everyday life and beyond. Visit today and receive your initial consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic. You're back, baby. I know when I hear the rattle, the, keys, the, I know the rattle of the keys, we are getting close to game time. The Hurricanes and the Tar Heels. Hurricanes game day, getting you ready for that. And yes, ready, Josh? It's time for your BMW <laughs> keys to the game. Brought let's to you go by the South Florida BMW <laughs> Centers. And uh, let's center in on Michael Barrow, uh, his keys to the game. Michael, when you think, okay, how does Miami beat this very talented UNC team in a very important game at Hard Rock? What's key number one? Hey man, I'm taking it. I'm taking it to underneath the tree where we used to play chess, man. The first, the first thing we got to do is check 
checkmate. And what I mean by that, man, hey, once we stop the run, man, we got to get out the sand. We got to sack him. In the games that they're lost, the three games that they're lost, right, they're giving up 29 sacks the whole season. In the three games that they lost, they gave up 15 sacks. We got to get to him to stop him, that explosive offense. And then also, we got to protect our king, all right? Seattle got the slogan, let Russ cook. We got to let King grill, right? We got to protect him, man, because we understand when you give him protection that he's deadly, he get it done. So obviously, offensive line, we got to get that done. All right, the next key, number two, is dynamite. And what I mean by that, I used to watch this show called Good Time, oh, yeah. and they had a character named JJ. So anytime he did something, he was like, dynamite, right? And so we got to be dynamite, right, in the explosive game, right? Just like Josh mentioned, right, North Carolina defense, all right, they're giving up 23 explosive Close of passes over 30 yards or more this whole season. We got to take advantage of that, all right? And then also defensively, though, we got to stay on top. This team, right, they like to, they love to do a lot of double moves with their receiver. They want to take it over top, all right? They, they don't want to settle for the quick pass, the RPO, no. They want to set you up, right? Throw the ball over top. We got to do a great job eliminate eliminating explosive pass plays and get it done. And then last thing, we got to be physical, physical, physical. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, <laughs> hey, this this ain't track. This football, right? We got to be like Happy Gilmore, how he did the golf, man. We got to bring the wood. We got to be physical, right? You already saw the running back, especially number 25. He breaks a lot of tackles. We got to wrap up. We got to be physical with these receivers, jam them, put our hands on them, slow them down. We're going to be minus Al Blade, so we got to be great, get some contact on these guys, slow them down, and then we got to be physical up front on both sides of the ball. North Carolina, like I mentioned on defense, they went to a small ball. We got to take advantage, man, run the ball, move the chains, protect King. We got to get it done. If we do those threes, man, three things well, man, we're going to win the game. Those are keys to the game. Brought to you by BMW, your South Florida BMW Centers, and our one and only Michael Barrow. Guys, real quick, though, and I'll, Josh, I'll start with you. Yes. Uh, there's this theory that I've read in prepping for the game all week that a lot of people think this is going to be a shootout. Is that advantage Miami or advantage UNC if this game turns out to be a shootout? Well, I think the good news for Miami, we've seen it this year, uh, that Miami can hang with North Carolina, right? We saw them against NC State put up 44 points. A week ago, they scored, you know, 48. They put a bunch of points up on Louisville and Florida State. I think the one thing, I, you know, I don't know exactly how the game w w w will fare. I'm not a, one into making predictions, but if I was to put, uh, if I was to, I guess, uh, <laughs> move some money to the middle of the table, I would bet on our defense. Yeah. I, if I was, if I was going to say their defense stops our offense or our defense stops their offense, I'm betting on our defense has a better chance of stopping their offense than the other way around when you just break it down. Because the one thing, we, we've talked a lot about North Carolina's offense and all the good stuff, mm -hmm. but the weak link is the offensive line. And I think one way to slow down this offense, whether it's run or pass, is our defensive line, as Mike likes to say, they got to eat. Our defensive line has to eat, and I think they can. Teams have gotten to Sam Howell. Now, he's not easy to get down. We talked about he's a playmaker in the pocket. But we talked about Jalen Phillips earlier, Quincy Roche, Nesta Silvera, Jafari Harvey. Those guys need to be in the backfield, and they need to – not only they be in the backfield in terms of putting, putting uh, pressure on Sam Howell, but they got to be in the backfield in terms of winning their matchups with the offensive line and making plays against the running backs. They can help stop the running game if they win the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you who's hungry right now. You said his name, Jalen Phillips. That man is, is ready to eat as he's been eating a lot in the last few weeks in those games as Michael highlighted earlier. So that is your uh, preview, your keys to the game. When we come back, ring it. We have got rings and chains and a special guest. You don't want to miss a Kane's QB great right after this. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. King, 
part of the long legacy of some great Miami quarterbacks, and he is certainly one of the more talented ones Miami has seen in a long time. He's looking sleek in those nice uniforms today. He is ready to get it done on senior day and a huge day inside Hard Rock Stadium against UNC. De'Ara King will hope to continue the great tear he has been on, and the Hurricanes have been on as well at 8-1 right now. Will Manso, Michael Barrow, and Josh Darrow as we turn our attention down to rings or chains. And I mentioned the great tradition of Miami quarterbacks. You saw Derek now part of that tradition with the season he's having, but certainly a guy that was part of the early beginning of that tradition, and that is Steve Walsh. Such a great cane. National champ joining us now here. Hey, Steve, it's great to see you. We appreciate you joining us here at Hurricanes game day. Uh, you, we see the numbers there. 87 national champ, 48 touchdowns in a career. And I, the question we always ask former players when they're on is, how, how are things for you these days? I know it's been a crazy year. How are you doing? Hopefully safe, family safe. Uh, but what have you been up to these days? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm hiding out in West Palm Beach. And I tell you what, I've never, I never looked so good. Those black jerseys are pretty sharp. I wish, uh, <laughs> wish we would have had some of those. those those things in the in the 80s but uh you know we, we did all right in our our, our, our orange and white so yeah. but uh, no I've, I've been in west palm I, i'm coaching up in the cfl and you know our season got canceled and i guess it was august they finally pulled the plug on it and so we've just been been hanging out and doing zoom meetings with our other coaches and and uh just trying to get through this mess steve what's up my friend I, not, you think you'd look good in that black uniform i don't know man I, oh, yeah. how do i think that would look on you well, I mean, it wouldn't make me any, look any slower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, don't, you and De'Ara King don't quite have, have the same game, uh, ball game. But uh, they, they flashed the numbers, that, you know, the, the 87 champs and one of the, the iconic plays of that season. One of the iconic plays that everyone talks about is your throw to Michael Irvin up, up in Tallahassee. Maybe you could walk us down memory lane and, you know, in the huddle, the play call, uh, what you were seeing and, and just that moment. Well, I mean, first I got to ask you which one. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we had a couple going down the stretch there. One was uh, just a cover zero, you know, blitz that, that we hit over the top of them. But the, the one that everybody talks about for the most part is the one down the sideline yep. that, that put us ahead. And, and, you know, it was something that Michael was so physical and so good getting around press coverage or a jam because they were in a cover two shell. And, you know, I, I think we called a, a little audible because I wanted to get them up the sideline and I felt like I could freeze their safety and slip the ball in there with my little pop gun shooter arm <laughs> and uh, put it, put it right there. And, and then Michael did the rest like he did so many times. Hey, what's up, Steve, man. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Michael, good to talk to you again. Uh, likewise, man. Hey, talk about Derek key, man. What from being a quarterback, man, talk about his play. What, what have you seen from your, from your angle? Well, you know, obviously nobody could have predicted the season that they've had, but I, I do know this. When they signed him, I, I knew the sort of player he was at Houston and the production that he had. And to me, it gave them another very athletic quarterback that could throw the ball. And, and I said this on another show uh, earlier in the season. As a quarterback coach, you don't want a runner who can throw. You want a thrower who can run. And that's what D.R. King has shown this year. And he's made a lot of plays with his arms as well as with his legs. And just gives them a lot of versatility. And, and Rhett Lashley's been able to utilize that in, in coming up with creative game plans to really put the defense in a bind and allow them to, to put up a ton of points this year and a lot of yards and you know, really flipping the switch from last year. Steve, I'm curious, you know, I mentioned the legacy of great Canes uh, quarterbacks, and we know there have been so many uh, <laughs> that we go a long list. How often do you keep in touch? I'm just talking about from a QB perspective. Do you talk to some of the guys throughout the years? And how often throughout the years have you have you even talked to maybe current Canes QBs over the years of, of you know, wanting to look back at the legacy, what it means to be a University of Miami quarterback? Yeah, well, as my coaching career has professed into, you know, professional level at the CFL level, um, you know, obviously we're, we're busy during the fall and it, it makes it a little more difficult. But over the years, starting with, you know, probably Ken Dorsey, you know, I did spend a lot of time with, with Kenny and, and talking to him. And, and then as it went uh, down the road and I, I can't name them all, but yeah. you know, I did try to stay in touch and then it's kind of fallen off the last couple of years because as I said, I've been more busy with, with my profession and coaching. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, but certainly a long list of uh, great Canes quarterbacks. All right, Steve, now we always love to catch up, but this segment is called Rings or Chains. I, I hope that you've been, you've been told what it is. So we got the rings, right, the, the, the 
touchdown rings, and then you got the turnover chain. So it's basically an offense or defense kind of question prediction. So let's get to question one and see what you think. Question one has to do with Derek King on one end and the defense on the other. Do you think Derek King gets three or more touchdowns today against UNC, or the defense has three or more turnovers for Miami? Yeah, I think it's, it's easily, I don't know if I say rings here or what, but uh, I think it's going to be a game where Derek King has to be productive and uh, three touchdowns are well within his reach. And, and you know, North Carolina, they don't turn the ball over. Sam Hall does not throw, you know, you see the stat there, does not throw a lot of touchdowns. So it's it's definitely the rings, I guess, is the way yeah. I'm supposed to answer. Yeah, yeah, that's, you, that's go. you got it. You got it. You, you got it. Onto Very it. astute, Steve. You're always a uh, high, <laughs> high, high, high football IQ. Oh, you, you know, it's on this. Offensive guy. You got. Well, listen, offensive. it's funny, Steve. The way it's worked out, whenever we have a defensive guy on, he always goes defensive. Whenever we have an offensive yeah. guy, he always goes offense. But in this case, I, I think I see where you're going. I mean, Derek King is a phenomenal player. Uh, okay. Question two, though. We didn't come up with this question. These are some really big numbers, but we, <laughs> but we asked them. Do you think the running backs from Miami have an opportunity to get out 250 yards rushing, or do you think it's more likely that the defense holds UNC to under 250 yards? Again, 250 is a huge number, but uh, what would you think the advantage is there? Do you think with Miami defense or offense? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go uh, uh, chains, I guess. Yes. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, the – the greatest uh, weapon a quarterback can have is a outstanding defense. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a game where the defense is going to have to play. Now, it might turn into a shootout, but at some point they're going to have to stop them once, and then Miami's going to have to go down and score to win the game. But but I, I think, you know, North Carolina is a very explosive offense. they got two really good running backs, uh, two outstanding receivers, and quarterback is really playing well. So, so I, you know, I've, I actually watched a lot of film in North Carolina as I studied them for our team. But um, they, you know, this is definitely where the defense is going to have to hold uh, North Carolina down, rushing the ball. Uh, and, and, and yeah, it better be under 250 yards. Yeah, you're, you're, about, you're right about that. All right, so we got the chain. Nice. So we got a ring. We got yep. a chain. Tiebreaker. Yeah, tiebreaker. Question number three uh, is, and this lends into more. We were talking about Derek, and the question has to do with wide receivers from Miami and then go to defense. Will the wide receivers have Ooh. four more receiving touchdowns? That's a big number, but Oof. if Eric throws three or four, obviously uh, more likely it's going to be the receivers catching them. Or is the defense going to have four or more sacks for Miami on Sam Howell? Well, it's when you look at the games that North Carolina Carolina's lost, and that's Florida State, Virginia, and then Notre Dame, Both, all, all three of those teams had at least four sacks. And so I'm going to go uh, chains again because again yeah. I'm, I'm the optimist here. Yeah, baby. I'm saying what does what does Miami have to do to win? And I, I'm, exactly. I'm obviously going to pull for the green and orange. And uh, so yeah, the, the defensive line has to play outstanding tonight uh, or today mm -hmm. to, for them to win. And, and then the flip side of that question is, you know, with the two tight ends that they have, yeah. with what they do in the running game, I think it's easy for maybe the receivers only have a couple but those tight ends get a couple touchdowns as well so uh you know it's gonna it's gonna have to be a, a collective group offensively for miami uh to put the points that i think they're going to need to score uh but the bottom line is this game is going to be won and lost uh with that defensive line can they get after this quarterback because he's not going to quit he's going to get his yards but miami's going to have to get them in enough negative plays with sacks uh to to get off the field that is your rings. Well, he should have, wait, we should have, he could, Steve could have done the whole show with us. Hey, he, he, he got it all broken down. Hey, I like Michael. I like your keys, baby. I like yours. You got, some, yeah, you, you got you all just, the numbers. He's got all the numbers yeah, ready. Steve, before we let oh, you go, God. we always like to do this too, and that's a big picture uh, when we talk to a former player. Obviously, you, you know, you're a busy guy with your job, but you, you keep close to the University of Miami and what they're doing. When you look at the season they've had at 8-1, and one, do you see Miami turning the corner? Do you like where this program is headed under Manny Diaz and the change, especially after the struggles of last year, where obviously as a program there were uh, there were some tough losses? You know, it's such a loaded question with the season right. that we're in with, with COVID and stuff because so many teams, I mean, who would have thought Penn State would have done what they did? Yeah. And, you know, Ohio State can't even get a game, back, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's it, obviously, hey, you line up and you play with who you got, and Miami's done that, and they won, obviously, eight games. So you got to give credit to Manny and, and, and really that entire coaching staff because, you know, normally it's just the grind of game planning and, and going week in and week out. 
well, hell, this year has been a whole different grind with, with the health issues and, and uh, guys dealing with, with that. So it's, it's been amazing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm shocked that college football has been able to get this far, uh, you know, with, with the, you know, obviously there's been disruptions and they expected that, but, but I, I do like obviously where Manny's going with this program. You know, I'm not sure how long they'll be able to keep Brett Lashley, but obviously he's made a huge difference offensively. And, uh, you know, and hopefully this carries over into the recruiting season. And uh, I don't know, signing signing day might have just happened or maybe it's next week, the early signing period. So hopefully they continue to get some good, talented guys. For sure. And obviously you were one of the many talented, the greats at UM, and we appreciate your time. Steve, the best to you uh, when that CFL season does resume and also health and safety to your family. Have a great holiday. All right. Thanks, Thanks man. Steve. See you, Steve. All right. The one on the Steve buddy. Walsh here on Hurricanes Game Day. When we come back, we'll have more Hurricanes Game Day. Yes, we are nearing game time from Hard Rock Stadium. We'll keep getting you ready for the Canes and Tar Heels in a showdown to end the regular season. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team, I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep us safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are, we're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually. Yes, Senior Day, such a significant part for the University of Miami, their program, and the families there. De'Eric King getting all the love. His one season as Miami, so impactful. We talked about it earlier in the show. De'Eric, you can keep on running that way. I know you're going to have an NFL dream, but you can come on back, too, if you want for another year. <laughs> we'll let you celebrate Senior Year again. One more year. One more year, five with that. Come on, man. So come on. Michael come on. Barrow, Josh Darrow, yeah, we're the cheerleaders. And listen, whatever that young man does, he's got a great future ahead. Uh, and it's certainly been fun to watch him here at the University of Miami. Guys, we're going to talk more about today's game and kind of put the finishing touches on Hurricanes game day in a moment. But let's talk about how about the fact of how good we look in our return together. Did you notice that? Oh, how good we look. See that? How good we look. And, and that is because, thank you to the UM Campus Store for this corner zip-up you see here. It's part of the new Adidas postseason collection. It's available online at Shop. U of Miami.com, or you can go in store at the lovely UM campus store uh, located on this beautiful University of Miami campus in Coral Gables. What do you think, guys? This is a comfy fit. I like it. They took care of us today. They, they really did. Look at the gold. We over, over here, gold. Gold hey, Adidas logo. That? I like it. It's the postseason look. Turnover chain. It turn, right yeah, you, that's what the, uh, the quarters are. If you want to bring the chain, you can do it like that and open it up with the chain. If you want to, if it's a little cold, Michael, here in Florida, you know how it is. It gets cold. It was like 65 this week, so we were all bundled up. You know, covered Parker on in this weather. But that is your item of the game. And again, check it out at uh, shopuofmiami.com or in store at the UM campus store on the lovely University of Miami campus. Guys, uh, we talked a little about the seniors, but Michael, I want to give you an opportunity as well to, to get into that because when we discussed it, we kind of had to get through it quickly and preview the game. But now when you look at the impact of these seniors and what it means to no, you're taking that field for the last time. We're in that jersey at Hard Rock for the last time. Your family's there. I know it's been a unique year given everything that's happened, but what does it mean, Senior Day, when you think of that? I mean, it's an emotional time. I mean, obviously, like Steve alluded to, they've been through a lot with this whole COVID, and it, uh, uh, it's been non-traditional, right? Yeah. It's not – nobody planned this. Nobody expected to be this way. But I think from a team-wise, right, it, it all can come together, right? They take care of business this day. They can finish strong. You know, this senior group, man, if they're being here for, or regardless, you've been here four or five years or you just got here one year, all right, it's a special season this year, especially with all the stuff that you've been been through. It's like you've been in a foxhole. You've been fighting through this, and you've been a fighting opponent that, that right now we currently can't defeat, right? Mm -hmm. And so then all hands been on deck. And so this is spirit special experience. So then when guys experience this and they go through this together, these are memories that they're building for a lifetime. So anyway, when you talk about UM, I mean, you come there to senior year, man, uh, you get ready to play. You're like, man, 
let's finish strong. Let's do something special. You want to go out with a bang. And I and I think right now, especially with the black unis and all this, potentially can have a six-game winning streak. They want to finish the season strong. And then even the younger guys, they're like, hey, man, hey, let's win this for our older guys. Let's win this for our seniors. So it's very emotional, man. Some guys can move on to the NFL. Some guys, man, this may be the last time they play uh, football. So you want to make it make it last. You want it to be special, man. You definitely want to make it a Kodak moment. Yeah, you want to remember it with that victory and what it would mean. We've already talked about the big uh, picture yeah. landscape of it. But, Josh, for you, when you look at this, look, we spent a whole segment talking about the job Manny Diaz has done. But what about the job these players have done? You know, to overcome the weekly challenges and not knowing who's going to suit up or who's going to, what you're going to do and who's going to run at practice and how are you even going to practice. To be able to get to this point at 8-1 and one is pretty significant. 100 percent and we talked about it earlier that you know nothing's been normal about this season and it kind of caught up with Miami later in the season than earlier uh, but you know there was so there's a as Steve Walsh just talked about right there's so much there's so much uh, that's put on uh, either the staff or the players plate each and every week to get ready for a game and then you just add on top of that COVID right because that's a stressor in and of itself right do I have it do I not have it am I socially distanced am I wearing my mask who have I come in contact with? Am I getting ding for contact tracing uh, or whatever the case might be? So you know, they talk about this year, the games have been precious, right? The moments have been precious. Yeah. Nothing's been guaranteed. We've seen games wiped away. We've seen weeks wiped away. We, a game next week has been taken off the schedule, you know, because Georgia Tech couldn't meet those protocols. So you, I think we should all be thankful we got this far. We should be thankful that hopefully there's going to be a, a big time bowl game down the road. But, but you look at it, you know, what was one of the big concerns, you know, when COVID hit? When you're, look, I'm, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I've got two kids, you guys do too, right? It was always the younger generation. They'd be a little more maybe risque or not following protocols. And yet these players have had to put, have had to put themselves really and their team and everyone in, in front of themselves because without it, there is no football. Yep. And, and, and Michael knows this, Michael knows this the routine of playing football is so significant to these kids. It's, it's what they've done almost all of their life, being on practice, being in the weight room, being in a meeting, being on a plane, being in a hotel. Mm -hmm. That's what they know and that's what they're comfortable with. So they've had, they've had to really prioritize that and really make self-sacrifices to ensure you can have a season when, as we can see, as Steve said, Ohio State's only played five games. Some conferences didn't even want to start their seasons on time. Yeah. So it, it has really meant a lot. And I think there has been a weight over this season. And I think today we should celebrate what the team has done to get to this point. But let's not celebrate too early, right? Let's, let, there, there, there's something to do on the field yeah. to really finish strong, right. to finish 9-1, mm -hmm. and to really solidify how this season can end with a big time bowl game. Let's celebrate about three hours and 45 minutes from now. And, I'm good. And, and, yeah. I, I, I like that. All right, when we come back, we're going to get final thoughts from both Josh and Michael here on Hurricanes Game Day. But what's college football without a band? And what's Miami without the band of the hour right now on Hurricanes Game Day?
as one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team. I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep us safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are. We're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually. the Canes ready, fired up to lead the way to take on UNC. Michael Barrow, what are those guys feeling right now in this regular season finale? Hey, man, they ready. A lot of emotions going through their mind, man. They ready to get on that field, man, finish up strong. Let's go, baby. We got those Canes over here. They looking sweet. We started the season. We started the season. Remember, we had the smoke. We had the smoke, Josh, for Michael. It was Lysol, oh, but whatever, <laughs> kind of the theme of the year. But now, now we get the real smoke one Man, last we are, time. we are finishing in style, boy. Look at those uniforms, boy. Those unis are looking tight. I'm not a big jersey guy, but I may have to rock one of those jerseys. Nesta maybe looks that, nasty. That, 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 these guys, look at Manny. Manny's trying to get that, that group going on what is senior day. We talked all show long, the implication, guys. Kings win this game. They're likely in the Orange Bowl. That'd be huge. That will be huge to be on that stage. Out of the smoke, the iconic moment. One of the most iconic moments in all of college football. The Hurricanes certainly looking ready for their showdown against UNC. By the way, this is our last regular season show, and we want to thank everyone with the University of Miami behind the scenes of production with sports information yeah. that has guided yes, us and sir. helped us put these shows together. Gentlemen, it has been an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to work with you all season long. It's been great. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Mike. Let's end it off with a win. Miami, UNC, Sebastian is ready for the Canes to get a big win against UNC and close the regular season. Finish it out. And one. Enjoy Hurricanes football against UNC.